Are you serious? They have found a 2,700-year-old uh, Hebrew inscription um, on a clay pot, a ceramic pot, pot actually. Uh, this, uh, can I have some coffee? You won't believe this. And grab a Bible and turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 because this ancient pot may be tied, it looks like it is, to ancient scripture. What? What? Coffee. All right, here's what it says. An archaeological dig in the city of David in the ancient site in Jerusalem uncovered shards of pottery, clay lamps, figurines, and a ceramic bowl with a 2,700-year-old inscription in ancient Hebrew. Now, a layer of the artifacts was found during a recent excavation of an area known as Gehun Spring, which was the main source of water for the city of David. The ceramic bowl, with its particularly preserved inscription on the rim, likely is dating back to 600 or 700 B.C. Wow, said lead researcher Joe Izzel. As archaeologists with the Israeli and uh, authority there, Antiques Authority, the inscription is likely the latter part of the name of an individual from the 7th century B.C. The research was set. Now, let me tell you what it says on the name. It says what's inscripted there is the first two letters are Z and K which would have the name Zechariah uh, uh, Beniah. It's Zechariah Beniah is the name on the inscription. So what the, uh, if you turn, if you will, right now to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Zechariah Beniah is actually mentioned in the Bible, very key. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and look in verse 14, the scripture says, Then upon uh, Jezreel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, uh, Zechariah, the son of Benaiah. All right. He was a Levite, so he was a priest in the, in the seventh century, if you will. In se around around that time period of 700 BC, but here's the key. What? All right. So Zechariah Benaiah found there. What would be the? Uh, that's a biblical reference. But what would be the spiritual significance of the find? And why did God allow us to find it now? Well, you have to understand the story of the Levite Zechariah Benaiah. So while you're in Chronicles. Turn with me. Uh, just flip back a page or so, and I want you to go with me to Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Let's start at verse one. I want to read a few scriptures. It says, it, "It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle." Okay, so the children of Jordan came to fight against the children of Israel, who was under the king Jehoshaphat. Now, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. So you've got people coming from Syria to help fight in the battle from the fighters from Jordan. In verse 3, it says, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Right there. Wouldn't it be great if our world leaders, would, would when, whenever a difficult situation come, would fast, call a fast and prayer um, instead of a press conference? What? 
uh, and Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So he's standing in the first temple. Remember, the first temple was not destroyed till 586 BC by the Babylonians on the 9th of Av, by the way. So he's standing in the Solomon's temple, the first and original temple of the Lord. And in verse 6, he said, O Lord God of our fathers. So he didn't, he prayed out loud before the congregation of the people. And he said, O Lord God, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave us it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And of course that's confirmed in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3 in the promised covenant. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, if, when, evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee um, in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us. They come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us, to inherit. In other words, when they came in, they could have destroyed the, the Jordanians and the Syrians. But God said, no, don't do it. Now what do we get in reward for that? They come to take our land. They come to destroy us, to cast us out of our possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. What are they doing now, folks? What are the armies against Israel doing right now? Shooting rockets out of Lebanon. Threatening chemical warfare weapons Assad has from Syria. Remember, don't forget, he threatened to use them. Everybody forgets. He threatened to use chemical weapons on Israel as well as his own people in Damascus. Iran threatens to annihilate Israel with nuclear weapons. And behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. That right there is the greatest statement in the prayer you could pray. God, let me remind you, we were going to wipe out these enemies, but you wouldn't let us. Now they're coming to destroy us in a land that you promised us, God. And they're greater. Their numbers are huge. They've come to destroy us. God, we don't know what to do, but put our eyes on you. Oh, my and verse 13, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon, here's the verse. Here is 2 Chronicles uh, 20, 14, 
that has the name on this pot. Then upon Jezreel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of, excuse me, I have trouble with vocabulary here, uh, as you know. Uh, Jeriel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, the son of Asma, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, the spirit of God said, hear ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus, so who, who did this? Here came the Levite, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah. He stood in front of the king and all of Israel and he got a word from God. You can never get a word from God if you don't put your eyes on Him, if you don't submit to Him, if you don't ask Him. And in the, here's the word He received in verse 15. And He said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are, are, are you serious? What? All right. So now you see the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. Now, how significant is this clay pot found with the inscription in ancient Hebrew from 2,700 years ago with the name of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah. It's because it's the name of the father of the priest, the Levitical priest, who prophesied a word of hope, a word of faith, and a word of deliverance to Israel as they were being attacked on either side. And although Israel at this very hour is facing the same confrontations from some of the old uh, foes, not friends, Israel must at this very hour, God is saying, once again, put your eyes on me. For the battle's not yours, Israel. They are mine. Whether America stands with you or not, whether NATO is with you or not, whether the United Nations and the whole world turns against you or not, whether the new world order forms and the beast rises with an antichrist and a false prophet and declares to destroy you, it doesn't matter. For greater is he that's in you, Israel, than he that's in the world. And let me just say this. For those of you that are born again Christians, this same promise that was given to the land of Israel and the children of Israel is also a commanded blessing upon you, you, you that have been born again. Oh my, I've got to get uh, Rabbi uh, Messianic Rabbi Stephen Danoon. I've got to get him as a guest on my show soon. To talk about these things. Don't miss my show today. i got to get going. We'll be on in just 53 minutes. God bless you. I'll see you at www.paulbagleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbagleyprophecy.com.